Hi, welcome to La La Laura Loxley. I'm Laura. Thanks so much for joining me on this video today. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, typically, I like to draw and paint people, but I have something different in store for you today. This is a tram um, that is at the Denver airport and I found this photo fascinating. It was taken back in 1995 and I'll put the link in the description below for you. I love the way the lights are illuminating around the tram and then you have the little lights that are on the wall that illuminate on the track. I just love this photograph. So I'm using the S gel pen that I've used in several of these videos. I'm still on that kick. For this illustration in my sketchbook in particular, when you add the water and the gouache to the illustration, it <laughs> makes a really, really cool grungy, dirty underground maintenance tunnel. So this technique is ideal for this photo and capturing the industrial maintenance tunnel, the never gets seen vibe of what's happening in this photo. When I choose a photograph to paint or draw as a reference, I number one look for um, the inspiration behind it. If you're not excited about your photographic reference, it's gonna be really hard for you to get through the painting, even if you run into problems um, or challenges throughout the painting. If you're not really excited about it, you're gonna to wanna to dump it, or you're gonna to wanna to, like set it aside or start over again or pick up something else. And there are some days where, yeah, you know, that's that's fine if you, you know, it happens to all of us. But if it's a photograph that you're really excited about, when challenges um, arise or you're not happy with the painting at a certain stage, you're gonna have or hopefully have that drive to keep pressing forward through it. In my opinion, to make a painting or a piece truly successful, you want to think about the surroundings. You want to think about what is in that photograph that the main subject matter. You want to really think about what that image or that thing is. So in particular, in this, this piece we're doing today, the train is the subject matter, right? So I'm really diving into, if I was standing on that platform, I would be smelling grease. I would probably be smelling um, metal brakes. Um, I would probably be smelling like a heavy air because there's probably not a lot of ventilation down there. I would be seeing dim lights and blinking lights from the train. And I would be hearing most likely the brakes, the echoes of other trains coming through the tunnel. I would be hearing the screech of the tram trains around the curve and so on. So those types of who, what, when, where, why, when you answer those, when you work on an illustration, it will really help you build your story. Especially with a historical reference that has so many adjectives, I guess you could say. So I'm using the gouache today and of course my favorite Windsor & Newton designers gouache. I've used this for decades and I love it so much. I think I just know how to use it and I'm kind of settled into it. Uh, I'm sure, like I say in every video, I will find another gouache to maybe use or try out. But while I have my palette right here, um, 
and it's still full, I'm still gonna use my Winsor Newtons. But nonetheless, um, I am using my mop brush right here and I am really giving these pans a really good soak. Why I do that instead of a spray bottle is because the gouache has a chalky base to it and the chalk absorbs the water super quick. And this number six mop brush holds a lot of water that I can deposit in each one of these pans. I've used this palette for a very long time for years I've probably had it for a good 20-25 years and I cannot find another one like it however it does hold the colors that I use all the time and more recently I've updated my palette with some other colors added into these wells but these are the colors I use all the time and like I said in my last video, I will make a video on why I have my palette set up the way I do. Um, I do have Lamp Black in this palette just to mix together um, with some colors, but I don't use it as a whole by itself. So the main colors I use all the time are right here in the corners and... Um, those are my go-to, so I always have a lot in those corner pans. Those are like my main mixing colors. Um, and we've got the, the, you know, basically the primary colors in there. So, uh, okay, so more on that, another video. So with this S gel pen, this S gel pen, if you've seen my previous videos, you will know that laying down color from the brush will create a beautiful bleed from the gel pen laying underneath. Already, you can see this dingy, underground, uh, old, like, um, industrial mechanical area uh, underground with this train so this is pretty cool this is the way this is the way I want to portray it all right I'm so I'm gonna show you again from a different angle laying this brush down with a lot of water and pigment smudges and blends in and blurs out the ink from that pen nicely for you as an artist to capture the feeling of being there in that photograph or in the illustration from the photograph to me is such an important thing to be able to effectively communicate what you want the viewer to see and feel as they view your illustration. To bring the viewer along with you is very magical. You want them to feel like they were there, but through your eyes and your art. I hope that makes sense and I'm not <laughs> rambling along. Um, yeah, I've had my professional career as an artist. Um, sometimes you talk to yourself in your head and you think about all these things and you just want to share it. And um, these are the things that I've thought about all these years and I hope they help you um, and your success as an artist. It's just some of the things that I think about that I wanted to share. All right, so I'm just blotting out with my mop brush. Um, a lot of this wash some extra water and paint that has drained over the top of the train now I want the inside to be a lot lighter because even though this is dark and in a tunnel the inside lights are on in this tram and I really wanted to make sure that that stayed light 
I didn't try to preserve the paper at all because I want to keep a unified grungy look and I didn't want the inside to look bare. So we want this completely dry yet again and this time I'm picking up a number six round. This is a Princeton Heritage brush. I use this brush a lot. Um, the, again, the links will be below for all the supplies that I'm using. It has a really good spring to it and I can get in some fine lines with, uh, and some fine areas with this brush. Um, as you can see, the shape that I'm painting in right now is thick and thin and this brush has no problem going in those areas. So I'm using some zinc white now to capture um, the front of this train. I'm starting off light and zinc white is, has pretty good transparency to it. I want to make sure that some of that dirty, in quotes, um, of the uh, gel pen comes through. All right, I've got some yellow ochre I'm putting on this landing or walkway. Um, this is probably just for service workers or maintenance workers. I don't think anybody walks in here. Um, so it's just pretty dirty, but it's illuminated by some of the lights that are um, on the line underneath. So um, in my reference photo, this part is illuminated from some of the lighting that's down the tunnel. All right, some burnt sienna on the roof. And you'll see I'll add in some other colors in a very transparent way. Um, I'm not getting really heavy in a traditional gouache sense in this piece. I think the only time I get real heavy with the gouache is when I start adding more white on the tram itself and also some of the shadowing. So I am going to stop talking now and I'm going to let you watch this video and I will pop in in just a little bit. If you have any questions or comments, please, please, please feel free to leave them below. I'm more than happy to accommodate any questions you may have and or you just want to say hello.
All right, I'm gonna hop off here. This is my stop. <laughs> so silly. Oh gosh. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, next time we'll do something a little bit different and we'll change it up again and do another historical vintage retro illustration. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe and share if you feel so compelled. Thanks again for watching. Bye, guys.